Star Wars Geek Girls. They're geek girls that like Star Wars. And sometimes crap. Hi, I'm Zoe from Star Wars Geek Girl. I'm here with Lizzie. Hi. And we're going to continue to talk about Star Wars. Uh, specifically, right now, Star Wars Celebration. <laughs> yes. We're on our, our we're on the last day of the recap. We're on Sunday. Mhm. Which was a sad day because you know it's over, but it's still a good day. Did it only last four days or three days? It was th- it was f- five days. Five. Okay. Thursday. <laughs> wait, hold on. I need to count. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, it was four days. Yeah. I don't know. I can't do math, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, Sunday. So, in the morning, there were tons of panels, but the big ones, I think, were Phantom Menace and Resistance. The big ones to us, at least. Um, so, first was Phantom Menace, 20th anniversary, which I actually think, like, the actual 20th anniversary was, like, a couple of days ago, actually. Yeah. Which is cool, you know. I wasn't alive then, but it sounds like it was <laughs> I, a good time. I definitely definitely wasn't either. <laughs> um let's see if I can get the exact date. May nineteenth. Oh, so it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> On the day we're recording this. We're a little late this week because busy. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was also busy, don't apologize. I mean, you were less busy. I Yeah, I had prom on Saturday, though, which was great. I was a soak it out. Yeah, it was cute. <laughs> and I just stayed home, because prom was also that day for me, and I did not go. You're a junior. Yeah, they have proms for junior and senior. Really? Yeah, so everyone else went. <laughs> And um, I didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. I just stayed home and worked on my essay and stressed. It was great. Oh. We had a prom it's a- for juniors here. That's a uh, lot of senior quotes in my school, which makes me mad. Cause, like, you don't have senior quotes? No, and it's sad because I don't want a senior quote. What would your senior quote be? I don't know, but I want one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't thought about it because I don't have one. But, I, okay, okay. <laughs> I think I would want to. It would definitely a be a Star Wars quote. Yeah, I'd want a Carrie Fisher quote. Because Carrie Fisher. Yeah. But for prom, what I, I had the Ahsoka dress from her universe, obviously. Yeah. And I had, we made a bracelet based on Ahsoka's Padawan braid. So I had that, mm-hmm. and then I had Ahsoka painted shoes, and I had Ahsoka's necklace, like her little choker thing with a little diamond shape, mm-hmm. which we painted with paint markers on the gold necklace, <laughs> and by the end of the night, because I had prom from 6.30 to 10.30, and then post-prom from 11 to 3. And by yes. the end of the night, I had this big gold streak on my neck. Because I was <laughs> yeah. paint then. Which was great. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a fun time. I was very Ahsoka. It was great. It was so good out. Yeah, a lot of people were like, oh, Zoe, so is this like Star Wars themed? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, I could tell it was. I don't know what it is, but knowing you, I knew it was Star Wars. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I, I, I think I'll go next year, since I'll be a senior and stuff, but I don't know what I would wear, because, you know, the first thing is Star Wars, but I, I, I don't know. Do I don't Padme know. Do a Padme dress. Ew. The, like, the lake dress, though, it's really pretty. It is really pretty, but, like, I need something that would look good on me. <laughs> you would look good in a lake dress. But like, not really. I need need something dark. <laughs> dark. Dark. Do like 
Kylo, but like a dress. Kylo dress with yeah, like but like Force Awakens jacket. Kylo because that's the best one <laughs> with like the scarf and all that. Yeah, with leather jacket. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I think I told you already. But thank you for the leather jacket. It's really nice. I oh love it. yeah. <laughs> It's been raining, though, and it doesn't have a hoodie, so I've just oh, yeah. worn it yet. <laughs> well, like, I realized when I sent it to you, because I'm like, huh, summer's about to start, and I just sent her a black, long-sleeve leather jacket. <laughs> huh, huh. I didn't think that through. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I will. I will wear it and suffer. And but suffer in pretty. <laughs> For context, it's not, I didn't just send her a plain leather jacket. It has Sabine's uh, starboard paint on the back. It's not a regular one. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, and I love it. Yeah. So thank you. Hey. <laughs> I got to use an airbrush. Ooh. It's cool, because I'd never used one before. Mm-hmm. Because my dad and I just got it, and we were trying to figure it out. And we, we were like... Why isn't it spraying? And then we realized we had it backwards and the cap on the other end and it got all gunked up and we had to clean it out and <laughs> yeah, it was a fun time. Oh, I hate the spray because I have traumatic memories from doing Hera. Traumatic. It just, it was just painful in the, like getting up in the morning and having to get paint all over my face. And under my eyes. Doesn't sound too fun. No, but afterwards it was. After the paint was on. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but then washing it off probably was... That was... Yeah, there was always green paint in my hair and I would go to school. And then, like, they're like, oh, you have green stuff on your... On, like, near your ear. I'm like, oh, just, just ignore that. It's nothing. <laughs> So, yeah. Paint. Paint. Um, so we're talking about celebration. celebration. Uh, Phantom Menace panel I went to, and it was super cool. Ahmed Best came out and got a huge amount of applause, which was super well-deserved, more than deserved. Yeah. Um, and... They had, had Ray Park and Ian McDermott, who had some funny quips about the revenge of, or not the revenge, the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> too much to keep track of. Revenge and return and rise is too much. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> um, what else? Who else was there? Uh, and Ahmed Best. I had other people. Ahmed Best. Ian McDermott, Ray Park, Warwick Davis, Anthony Daniels. Anthony Daniels is like a tank. He did so many panels. <laughs> yeah. He's solid. He's pretty, like, out there. Yeah, he's a great it's stage so presence, presence, too. He's so funny. <laughs> yeah. And they mostly, it was mostly just, it wasn't really, like, new, new information, but it was a lot of, like, just stories from the set. And some mm -hmm. really cool, like, background pictures and information. They had some of the, like, the artists and stuff there. Like, you know, like the sound designers. Mm -hmm. Which was super That's cool. Good. And you, did you, you saw, wait, were you there there? Yeah. Yeah, I got okay. into that panel in the lottery. It was cool because You my, got into really good ones. <laughs> I got into, like, every single panel I wanted to. Um, the only... The Return of Skywalker, I didn't get into the actual arena. I just got into the, the um, spillover room. Uh -huh. But, it like, the last Jedi panel in um, Orlando, they had, like, exclusive footage for yeah. those people. But they didn't really have that for the Rise of Skywalker, I don't think. So, it didn't really matter that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I got, I got into the Mandalorian. And then I sat in those chairs for four hours for the Clone Wars. And I got into Phantom Menace. And I got my reservations for Rebels and Resistance, so it was a pretty good time. <laughs> I like the lottery system, it works well. <laughs> for you. <laughs> for me. Well, I mean, 
I just, even if it didn't work for me, like, it still at least gives the advantage to people who can't be in line for, like, four days. Yeah. You know? So. It's a good system. I hope they keep it, because it works. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it works. Yeah. I mean, I think pretty much everybody I know at least got into one of the panels they applied for. Mm-hmm. And, like, even if it's just in the spillover room, they at least got into one. Yeah. So, it was all good, you know? Mm-hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't called not- a spillover room. It was called something else. I can't remember. Um... <laughs> But did you did your dad regret not staying with you in the room? I don't room? think so. Okay. <laughs> Cause I was just wondering. The, all the clips are on the stream, so he got to watch them still. Cause I was mm. I thought it was gonna be like the Mandalorian where like they didn't they showed like the exclusive stuff and didn't show anybody else. But like mm-hmm. they didn't, which is fine. I I'm still glad I stayed and got to do it, but. No, I think he preferred not sitting in the same seats for four hours. But yeah. I got to see Alan Tudyk, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Good. Yeah, he's cool. Um, so that was that was Saturday. We're talking about Sunday, Lizzie. Sun, <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah. uh, Phantom Menace. Cool panel. I would recommend watching it for people, you know, if you have... Like, an hour or so to kill. You know, give that one a watch. It was pretty good. Um, I was, like... Because, like, they started it by showing, like, one of the original trailers for Phantom Menace. And, like, as soon as it came up, I just started crying. I'd never even seen that trailer before. Because, like, you know, I wasn't alive. But, like, I just started crying. My mom was looked over me and she was like, How many times have you seen this movie? No. Oh. Poor, poor crying Zoe, as always. That was every panel, though. Like, really? Every single one. I cried. Your 2SO one? You know, I didn't cry at that one. I almost did. I think I was, t- t- I was talking about this. No, I was talking about this yesterday at the... Or not yesterday, whatever. The last time we did an episode, that was not yesterday. Um, <laughs> But I was talking, and like, at the very end... I was recap, I guess. But the very end, Alan Tudyk was like, "Oh, we have a preview to show mm-hmm. you all for the Cassian show." And I almost started crying, and then the clip started, and it was a <laughs> joke, and I just got so mad the tears just disappeared. And, like it was funny. It, like in retrospect, the clip they showed was very funny, but I was, I think, I was too disappointed and angry to fully appreciate it because <laughs> I just felt betrayed. I wanted to see Cassie and K2. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a good clip. I just, maybe, and you know what, maybe it'll really be in the show and then everyone will be like, Zoe, you stupid. <laughs> but. I was. Betrayed. I was really betrayed. Alan Tudyk betrayed me personally. <laughs> you he, personally yeah he set that up in his panel solely because he's like I don't know who Zoe Hinton is but I'm going to betray her <laughs> <laughs> of course it's exactly what happened I'm moving furniture downstairs it wasn't me uh <laughs> if you heard that <laughs> that wasn't me either um <laughs> So, you sure? I'm very sure. Although, you know what? I was in the bathroom today and I had my friend over, and my dad was sawing something or doing something in the garage, and it made, like, this really, like, almost like a fart noise. <laughs> and my friend was like, are you okay in there? I was like, it's the garage. It's not me. <laughs> you know, we just gotta, we gotta make sure, okay? Okay. Um... Um, so Your Sun- dad's out to get you. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Phantom Menace panel. It was a fun time. It was pretty good. They showed us lots of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And they didn't give a poster, which was weird, because I heard that, like, 
Because, like, I wasn't at the Rise of Skywalker panel, obviously, but, like, every other big panel gave a free poster out. So I kind of thought, like, the Phantom Menace panel would have, like, an exclusive, like, Phantom Menace poster. Um, yeah. I'm not, like, mad about that or anything. You know? Like, it would have been cool, but I'm not, like, furious. I'm not gonna sue Lucasfilm or whatever. <laughs> but I was yeah. like, oh, you know, it's a little sad, but it was still a good time. Yeah. That's good. Um, I was at home doing nothing. And my dad was probably watching the panel. It's a helicopter. Helicopter. Fun. Um, hey. So after the Phantom Menace panel, me and my sister immediately ran back to the convention, to the main convention hall, to get in mm-hmm. line for the resistance panel. Ah. Uh. I got a reservation for, but my sister didn't. <laughs> um, because... You so know. you snuck her in. No. They had, okay, they had a line for people's reservations. So, okay, well, first, the, um, people <laughs> with the, the, um, that needed, that are deaf and need, or hard of hearing and need, like, sign language, they got in first to sit in the front. Like, mm-hmm. you know, because that's where the interpreters are. You can't sit in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, media people were there, too, because I think Jonah was in that line. Or she was in some line, like, VIP or, like, media. Or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and then they then they let the people with reservations in. And then they let everybody else in. So we ran over, I got in the reservation line, Safi got in the normal line. Yeah. And then, you know, we went into the panel. And we sat there for a very long time. <laughs> waiting for it to start. And then... That, and they had, like, they were, like, really cal- doing, like, games and stuff with the people in the audience, like, the hype people or whatever. And they had, like, they called up people in costume. And they like, there was a really, really good Kaz that went up. It was very good. Yeah. Which I didn't see, like, almost any Resistance cosplayers except for at that panel. So I don't know if they were all just, like, in hiding and then coming up for the panel. <laughs> or like what but I didn't see any it made me sad but then the panel came and I was like <gasps> so yeah hey. I think I, I want to do a Torah but I also want to cut my hair so bad wig no or do her helmet do her with the helmet on oh, that would be nice <laughs> helmets are good but my dad's gonna kill me yeah <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. I'd like to do a Sonara, but paint. Sonara. If I had to pick a costume where I'm going to get painted, I'd do Ahsoka first. Cause you should do Ahsoka. I would love to do Ahsoka, but I have too many Sabines to finish first. Hmm. I see. Um, yeah, the Resistance panel. So they had, they had like the writer, director dudes. Um, and they had, like, a sound guy who was, like, the host. I forget his name, but, you know, he was cool. And then they had, who else? They had Christopher Sean, who's Kaz. I don't care. He's the only name. Oh, they had Susie. Uh. Is it McGrath? Oh, God, I got her autograph. I feel bad. <laughs> She's <laughs> so sweet. But I talked to her and I can't remember her last name. Oh no, I gotta look it up now or else I'll feel bad forever. Okay, I guess she knows your name. Uh, she obviously doesn't, but... <laughs> Susie McGrath. Okay, it is Susie McGrath. Okay. Um, those are the only two names I can remember. So I'm just gonna say the characters. They had, they had Kaz, Tam, Tora, Eager, um... Hype Faison, who, he was, he's Don Faison, or something like that. Because I remember, because they were like, hey, they have the same name, that's cool. And they had, um, Orca. Orca, oh, Orca. Yes. I was like, Orca. Like, no, they had an Orca whale there. <laughs> no. 
definitely not what I was thinking. <laughs> um, so they had mm. that. I think that's everyone they had. Um, they didn't they have Miku have or, or um, Captain Doza. But did Aunt I say they have Tora? Because they had Tora there too. Tora's great. I mean, the actress. She was so funny she... the whole time. <laughs> they were all great, and they all acted a lot like their characters, which was funny. Like, yeah. Susie and Christopher would, like, get into, like, start, like, jamming at each other a little bit. And, like, I was like, oh, my God, it's Kaz and Tam. Hi, Mom. Do you want to say hi to the podcast? Hi, Zoe. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Congrats on the graduation. Oh, very thank happy. you. I'm not yeah. quite there yet, but thank you. Well, very close, though. Yes. And look fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. Lots of baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, you got that in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, bye. Do you bye. Want to, really quickly, do you want to say who your favorite Resistance character is? Resistance? Is it in the Star Wars Resistance? Yes, that's the show. <sighs> hmm. Because mm-hmm. we're talking about celebration in the panel. Niku? Yes, Niku. <laughs> Niku is my favorite one. I don't know. Bidey is my favorite one. Uh, I don't know. One of those two. They're really cute. They, they come in a pack. It's okay. All right, all right. Then. That's, that's, that's about right. Then. Yeah. But I like Kazuda, too, because he's growing, you know? Like, he's really getting into... Kind of like Ezra had his, you know... Had his, his bad his, moments. Yes, his rocky start, and then, like, you know... But, um, so I like the character development, pretty much every character. But I think... Um, Niku and Baidi are probably my perfect. Favorite. Yeah, they're perfect. They were perfect they are. from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Yay. Yay, Niku. Um, Niku was not there, unfortunately. No. I'm sad because neither Niku or Tam have action figures yet, and that makes me very sad. They need to have their own action figure. And I need Niku to have, like, an adjustable jaw. (laughs) (laughs) You know, he needs to have a little bitey come with him, like, he either comes with Bucket or Poe comes with BB-8. Or no, Cass comes with BB-8. And, like, you need to be be able to, like, open Niku's jaw and fit bitey in there. (laughs) I was trying to draw that the other day, and I was just too terrified because I was looking at, like, snake (laughs) pictures. And I was like, oh, God, like, if Naked could do that, that's just awful. I don't like that. <laughs> that's why not... they turned the camera around for that part. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, they did have all of the, they had to have those actors there, and they were all so great. They were a delight, especially uh, Tora. I don't remember her name, but she was so scared. She was so funny the whole time. She was mm-hmm. great. She and um, Kaz really stole the show in the best way. Um, yeah. And, oh, motorcycle. Uh, <laughs> uh. Um, I I don't even know. I. It was just it was a really great time, and it was you know very appreciative of Resistance because I feel like right now, and I know it's just because it's new. Resistance is, like, the underappreciated youngest sibling of the Star Wars animated shows. Yeah, I think, yeah, you like, know, like, Rebels was like that, too. And then it, now it's, like, Yeah, well, bigger. I, I know Resistance is definitely going to grow. Because, like, you think Clone Wars even started, and a lot of people <coughs> are like, oh, that's the kid Star Wars. Or, like, and they talk about how, like, a dumb Ahsoka was. And now it's, okay. like, beloved. Okay, so my dad has been re-watching Clone Wars and I just noticed how, like, Ahsoka can be bratty yeah, sometimes. But, like, she was but she's also a, a teenager. Like, like yeah, Ezra was bratty at first, too. I, yeah, I was, and, you know, I was like, oh, it's, it's okay, I should, it's fine. Because, you know, first of all, she gets better. Character second development all, is a thing. <laughs> yeah, and second of all, I was like that, too. Like, I know exactly how I was. So, yeah. I shouldn't judge. <laughs> But, you, you know, you think, like, Clone Wars started, and everyone's like, oh, that's the kid Star Wars, that's dumb. Apparently, I can't remember, you know, because I was seven, not on the internet, but apparently 
a lot of people say, like, oh, everyone hated the Clone Wars movie when it came out, which I find to be a questionable statement, just because people say that about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, there was definitely at least some people that thought it was dumb or whatever. Like, yeah. that's how, I mean, that's how things are, but, you know. And then, like, Rebels came out and everyone's like, oh, it's dumb. It'll never be Clone Wars. Ezra's annoying. And then now Rebels yeah. is, like, very loved. And then, like, now we have Resistance and everyone's like, oh, Resistance is dumb. It's kiddish. Kaz is annoying. So by the end of Resistance, I think we'll, you know, be in a good spot. And then the next animated show will start and it, we'll just have to go through it all, all over again. Because no one seems to learn their lesson. <laughs> yeah. I just... <laughs> I, I used... Yeah, I... I mm. <laughs> used to have a, a friend who was like, Oh yeah, Rebels sucks, and Rebels this, and Rebels that. And I was like... Ah, cut you out. <laughs> snap, snap. <laughs> so... I think... Resistance is amazing, and that's my opinion. <laughs> but it was so great to at the Resistance panel, and it was just, like, all so much love, and everyone was talking about, like, their character arcs, and all the actors were very, very insightful, like, on their characters, which is... I mean, that's not, I'm not saying I'm surprised by that. I don't think they're dumb or whatever, but it was very cool um, to see, because they clearly care so much about the show and their characters. It was, yeah, it was just really awesome. Um, I like. I think I like having, like you know, like because with panels, like I mean, with Clone Wars, there's so many characters that like not, not all of them could fit on a panel. <laughs> but they I think I like the fact that. Sorry, I just interrupted you. Keep going. No, keep going. No, I know. I like. I know they have the majority of them and I know like there is that one guy that can that does like all the clones so it doesn't <laughs> matter but um but like I guess I like having you know the whole everyone in the room like with rebels like the whole the whole crew could be there and Dave Filoni and that was cool and I like and I know um you know uh Niku wasn't there but you know I like having all of them there because like you can see how well they interact with each other and how amazing and fun they are and how they are a lot like their characters and stuff i don't know i think That's like cool. one of the primary differences between clone wars and rebels and resistance is that clone wars is more like plot driven in a way like in yeah. clone wars will get like, three episode arcs about characters we've never seen before and might not ever see again. Right. And, it like, that worked for Clone Wars. But Rebels and, and Resistance, too, they're more character-driven. Because, mm -hmm. like, in Rebels, we might get an episode that focuses on Zeb, but Zeb's not new. We know Zeb. Or Ezra right. or Sabine or Kanan or whatever. Like, even... Even episodes that are more, like, focused on maybe Rex or Ahsoka, who are, like, side characters, they're still heavily accompanied by Ezra or Kanan or Sabine or someone. Mm -hmm. And in Resistance, every episode is primarily about Kaz, but also, like, we see insights on Tam or Niku, depending on the episode, or Yeager. Um, yeah. I think it's because it's, like, I don't know, like, Clone Wars is about the Clone Wars. It's about the war. Rebels is about the rebels. It's about the people. The rebels, you know? Yeah. It's in the title. <laughs> resistance <laughs> about the resistance. The people in the resistance. You know? Because they are the resistance now. Yes. Um, so I think... I think that's the biggest thing when people... Sometimes people argue over Clone Wars or Rebels... And I think it just primarily comes down to whether or not someone's personal preference is for plot-driven shows or character-driven shows. And that's not... Yeah. One isn't better than the other. It's entirely personal preference. But mm -hmm. sometimes people seem to try and pass it off. Like, one is inherently better than the other, which is not the case. You know? But they make it the case. Apparently. Because, you know, there's no such thing as... It's personal preference anymore. You know, everything has to be better or worse. It's not just, I like it or I don't like it. It's, this is good or bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just... 
Um. Yeah, I just. <sighs> <laughs> I was just thinking about like I got in. At first, I thought it was a civil conversation, <laughs> but this guy, um, we were talking about Rose, and he was, and he was like, "Oh, um, I, it was something, you know, it was about Rose, of course." And I was saying like how she is a good character. I was like, "You know, she did this, and she did this, you know, she's uh, an amazing representation and stuff like that." And then they got all aggressive and upset and we're like all of a sudden we're like oh no no because last jedi was really bad and this this that and like and i was like well i mean i like it and they're like well i don't care what you think and i'm like okay you know then make your make your own movie dude go for it (laughs) you got this you know i just yeah like, you're either with them or against them now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes people forget that they have opinions. And, because, like, I don't know, because it's, like... They mistaken opinions with facts. Well, yeah, and it's, like, there are things I don't like. That doesn't mean that thing is bad. It just means I don't like it for whatever, it for whatever reason does not appeal to me personally. And that's okay. And there are things I do like. That doesn't mean they're the best thing in the world. That just means they appeal to me. Personally. And that's just like... Like, I think there's definitely merit to arguing, like, is this good and, like, is it well-constructed or this? Or Mm -hmm. is it not? Like, I think there's definitely merit to criticizing things from that frame. But, like, there's certain things where it's, like... Is it bad or do you just not like it? Because it's okay if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make it bad. Yeah, and, like, you don't have to be a trick. And then he, oh, God, he got off on a rant. And he was like, you know, Lucasfilm sucks and they deserve to go out of business. And I was like, okay, I'm out of here. They're not out of business anytime soon. Yeah, they're definitely not. (laughs) Like. They're doing pretty good. They're doing pretty good. (laughs) So, that was, uh. That was intense. Uh, yeah. Anyway, back to resistance. (laughs) (laughs) Um. It was a great panel. It was very fun. Everyone was great. Um. It was just, like... It wasn't quite as heavy as some of the other panels. Mm Mm-hmm. Um. Partially because I don't think Resistance is, as we know from our previous animated shows, it's not quite in its heavy stage yet. It's definitely getting there. <laughs> it's getting there for sure. Um, they they did show us the first episode of season two, which was phenomenal. Um, what a, uh-huh. I won't say anything about it because mm-hmm. I don't want the mouse to come after me. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're definitely taking that turn. Um, as Star Wars shows tend to do. But, like, a lot of the panels for, like, new stuff I went to, they were very, very heavy in terms of content, but it also felt like, like, especially, like, the Rise of Skywalker panel, it yeah. felt like, like, there's a lot of, like, responsibility on the, on, like, the, the creators. And, obviously, because... <laughs> As much as I love Star Wars fans, they, especially online, can be not so great sometimes. Exhibit um, age. Yeah. But with the Resistance panel, I don't know why, but it was very, it was, it felt, it was, like, like, relieving, you know? Yeah. It was, like, I don't know. It was just a very good, positive energy in that room. There's good, positive energy in all the rooms, but that one has been, like, a really light one. You know what I mean? It's hard to describe. No, I I think I get you. And I know how, like, a lot of the, you know, actors and actresses and people who made the shows, like, they're all so very nice. Like, Like, I haven't, I mean, like, I haven't really... I don't know. Like, <laughs> they just seem all really nice and great. So, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they were all great. They were, like, 
they were very like in a sense bubbly especially like Torah <laughs> <laughs> makes sense <laughs> yeah and it was just it was wonderful to watch because it like it really really felt like they were like friends like a family and they said a lot they're like we're like a family and it was very cool to watch that dynamic because mm-hmm. um, we see that in the show a lot I mean like for like for example like Tam and uh, and hype get along a little better in real life than in the show. <laughs> Just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> um, but, like, to see this, like, lovely dynamic was, it was very awesome. And there was a lot of, everyone, like, in the room, like, in the audience, just got very excited over everything. Like, a new picture would appear up on the screen, and it would just be, like, a screenshot, like, of someone. And everyone would just start cheering. <laughs> and, like, it was very confusing sometimes, because I wouldn't always notice the screen, because I was looking at the people. Because I was mm-hmm. up front, so the screen was, not was like, very high up for me. Um, yes. And so, I like, everyone would just start story. randomly cheering and clapping, and I was like, what? And I look up, like, oh, there's a new picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wish I was there. I showed us the episode. It was, it was amazing. Um, I cried, of course. Of course. Of course. And it was so good, and I can't wait for everybody to see it. Mm-hmm. Because it was amazing. <laughs> fine, um, fine, fine, whatever. They, I'm sorry. They did say in the panel, <laughs> they did say it takes off, that season two starts exactly where season one ends. And we did see that in the episode, good. I'll say that, because they told us. Um, yeah. it starts exactly there. So it's definitely like a Force Awakens, Last Jedi kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, which is nice. So yeah. So it's, it's, a, the one problem with that is it's very hard to figure out exactly where they are right now. Because we have these two movies yeah. appearing right one after another. We have this show one after another. I'm like, where in the movie are you? <laughs> Where? Because we, we know they're, we know they're after, they're quite a bit probably after Hosnian Prime, but like, has Last Jedi started yet? Like, cause like, like Starkiller Base is like, is Starkiller Base still kicking? Cause it wasn't really like mentioned. So like, are they like in Force Awakens? Are they in that like, the tiny, tiny, like, little area at, like, the end of Force Awakens and, like, beginning of Last Jedi? Like, where are you right now? Yeah. And also, That's where is Ezra? the one problem with such very close... Because, like, in Rebels, it's kind of like, yeah, they're a couple years before. It's, it was fun. And, like, same with the Clone Wars, too. It's like, they're a couple years. But, like, now we're, like, right... We're in this very narrow gap right now with Resistance. And it's like, where are you? <laughs> what is happening? Tell me everything. <laughs> I can't because I don't know. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great episode. Lots of cool friends coming back. Um, Stop. I'm sorry. People cheered whenever like certain characters came on screen. That was very great. And at the very end, oh, the end. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is probably torture, but. <laughs> It's okay. The end was just like, ugh. And, like, I was crying, and everyone's cheering, and I'm like, why are you cheering? But, like, also, I know why they're cheering, but, like, why? And I'm crying. It was, it was a time. Yeah. <laughs> Zoe was a mess. Yeah. And then, the panel ended. I ran up to the DJ guy, and I was, you know, I think I told the story. I was crying, and I was like, hey... I'm friends with the Rogue Rebels. Can I have a poster for them, please? And I think I made him uncomfortable with my crying because he <laughs> like, immediately was like, yeah, he didn't say anything. And I ran uh, to the autograph station to get Susie McGrath after the panel. Mm-hmm. And I was so worried. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be late. And, you know, I'm going to miss it. But then it was fine because she was late because she had to come from the panel, too. <laughs> I don't know why I was so worried. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah. I guess I just thought she was going to teleport or something. I don't know. Um, teleport right there. 
Lucasfilm has developed teleport technology, right? Yeah, I mean, that's how Dave gets around. Yeah, exactly. He rides his wolf through the portals and just goes... What's that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw this dog that looked like a wolf the other day, and it was wearing a cowboy hat, and I was like, oh my god, it's Dave Filoni. <laughs> we got you, Dave. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But that wasn't related to anything. Um, <laughs> then, yeah. It was important. No. Yes. And Nonetheless. Sunday. What else happened on Sunday? Wait, was that Monday? Hey, Dad, when did celebration end? Sunday or Monday? Monday. Monday. It was Monday, so it was five days. I didn't do my math wrong. I did my days wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you mention the term interview Bible? Yes. Um, so... That was, okay, Monday. <laughs> I think, but after I got my autograph, then we ran into uh, Savannah from the Dorky Diva. Got to talk to her, which was cool. Uh, yeah. It was kind of weird at Celebration sometimes, because I'd run into somebody, and I'd be like, oh, hey, hi, and they're like, what? Like, who are you? Who's this Sabine? And I was like, oh, you were on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and Safi danced with Sarah Young. Yeah, Safi danced in her triple zero with Sarah Young. Oh, yay. Yeah. There were quite a few times where I'd, like, talk to people, and, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, you were on my podcast, but, like, you don't recognize me. <laughs> but it was just, it was oh. just, yeah. But, like, I recognize them, which is just because I don't post too many pictures of myself, like, on Twitter and stuff. It's not, like, they hate me or anything. <laughs> uh... <laughs> They just don't know you. They just don't know As a you. random Sabine running after them. I know. And also I think the hair throws people off sometimes, too. I don't think so. Because I got, like, the white and purple wig. And I, that definitely throws people off a lot, I think. <laughs> um. Yeah, that was a little weird sometimes. Like, not weird in, like, a bad way. Just weird, like, kind of awkward. Like, oh, yeah, you were on my podcast. Like, we talked for, like, two hours. <laughs> You should know me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. That was Monday. Then they had the closing ceremony, which I actually didn't go to. Oh. Um, I got part, I caught parts of it on the big screen they had in the convention hall. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't want to leave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, you know, we had to. Yeah, I kind of had to, or they'd kick you out. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty big convention hall. I could have probably found somewhere to hid. But, like, there wouldn't be any Star Wars stuff anymore. Yeah, you could just hide in the, the cupboards. In the cupboards under the sink, with the pipes, when I'm contorting <laughs> my body at this horrible angle. And it hurts. <laughs> but I need to do it, so they can't find me, because I'd rather die before losing hide-and-seek. <laughs> <laughs> And you almost did. Yes. It was, it was funny, though, because I would, like, hear you guys come in, and they're like, is she in this cabinet? She wouldn't fit. And then you leave. I'm like, eh, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I didn't think you'd... I don't know. <laughs> I found a I, way. I was pretty good. I was pretty good at hiding. I wasn't in, like, cabinets or anything, but... That was pretty good. People I'm didn't find you. Very so. bad. Yeah. I mean, that's the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, when it, end, when it was ending, they announced that next celebration will be in Anaheim. Yay! Which is super cool. Hopefully it won't be over, like, my finals week or anything at college. Because then I won't be able to go... Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully it'll be like in the beginning, beginning of April, so I might be on spring break. Then I don't have to miss any class. Cause college. Cause college. Paying for that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. You know, we'll see when the dates and all that are announced. Mhm. Um. I wonder if we'll have like stuff going on at, like, Galaxy's Edge for it, too, since it's so close, you know? 
Yeah, that'd be cool. But also, like, that's so much money. <laughs> You're already paying to go to celebration. <laughs> <laughs> you <know>. Yeah. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, because that's that's what Disney do best. Take your money. Yeah. <laughs> but they're okay, doing the, it. They're doing the best ways. Right? They're doing the best. Ways. Right. <laughs> so you can't entirely get mad at them because, like, you're still having fun. You're just like broke, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know who else is really good at taking your money? Is Hot Topic. Because my friend and I went there today and I bought these clothes. And the person was like, oh, you know, if you buy another pair, like, of similar I don't ones, this is going. It's, um, it's only $5. And these were like, like, the one I was getting was like 40 And so, like, another pair for $5. And I was like, well, I don't know. And she's like, you know, you're three dollars off from getting fifteen and like what is it, hot cash? Mm-hmm. I was like, oh no. <laughs> I, I can't be three dollars away. So I did it. Oh. And like that's how they get you. And I still yeah. fall for it. Like I know. I know that's how they get you. I know they're just trying to take my money. But like <laughs> and, like my friend too, she was buying some shirts. And she was also three dollars away from getting the hot cash or whatever. And she was my friend was like, Oh well I'll just grab this necklace I was looking at earlier. And they were like, you know, if you buy <laughs> another necklace, you can get two other pieces of jewelry for free. My friend was like, Ugh, okay. And she did it. That's how they get you. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> It works in the bestest ways. I mean, now I have two pairs of shorts, so, like, go me. Yay! Um, they're pretty comfortable, but, like, still. Like, like, when I was doing it, I was like, I know. They're just trying to get my money. That's but all you are to them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I need... I know. I'm a, this like, is a wallet. I'm a poor <laughs> wallet with cash in it. <laughs> I need a not fix it, but, like, I have, I bought a, um, what did I buy from them? I bought, like, the Rocket Raccoon overalls from them, and I love them, but they're a bit big on me, so I need to figure out a way to sew them so that way they, they're more fitted, because otherwise they just look, not bad, but, like, baggy, too baggy, but, yeah. Um, I keep, whenever I'm waiting for, um, for, like, the, uh, Her Universe, like, fashion show to call my dad and be like, hey, you wanna, you wanna model for, <laughs> for some male, you know, for our merchandise? Universe stuff. That's what it is. Yeah. Our universe. My dad would rock it. <laughs> they need a Voss shirt. Or yeah. a Canaan shirt. Maybe a Voss hoodie. Mm. But it can't have sleeves. Right. So it'll be, yeah. have to be a sleeveless hoodie. Yeah. My dad would not do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It's almost Five Year's Day. Yeah. I was just going to talk about what I was going to do for my dad, but I realized he listens to the podcast. Yeah, that's probably not too good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, that was Celebration. We finished our recap on May 20th. Yeah. Um, But we did it. (laughs) We did it. And that's what matters. Um, I was gonna say something. I completely forgot. Uh, I don't know. Star Wars. When? Oh, when does? When does? Do we know when Resistance comes back? Um, I can't remember. Let me look that up for you right now. Thank you. 
<laughs> the only problem with the resistance is since it's like newish, kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, is that sometimes when you look stuff up, you just get like random stuff about like Poe from like the resistance books or whatever. It's like that's not what I'm looking for, man. But thank you. Yeah. Oh, I have a story for after you look, after you find out. Okay, this is a very old article. It's from before Celebration. That's not what we want. <laughs> um, it says this fall. Okay. It's a long, long, long time. So, yeah. I mean... We know it would be in the fall, because that's when shows usually start. Yeah, we're used to this. Yeah. <laughs> um. But, um, my story. So, I told you before, I was do I'm doing this, um, essay on transcendentalism and romanticism. And, you know, I'm not that hyped about it, because, you know, I just, I'm not a big philosophy person. And, um, but, and I was, like, having a lot of trouble with it. I was asking my teacher for help, because, you know, stuff like that. doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then I was like, oh, you know, you know, Star Wars is basically just, just perfect, because it's all transcendentalism and romanticism. It's cool. So, I, two of my sources are from Star Wars. It's Star Wars Clone Wars... The Deserter episode and Ray from the Last Jedi. And the and for my source for uh, Ray, I was gonna do like, oh, you know, uh, you know, like the whole fandom expected her to be this whole like cool um, uh, Skywalker, but you know, in reality, she's not. And, you know, stuff like that. And I was looking up, I was trying to look up um, websites and stuff that were all about, like, Rise of Skywalker. For some reason, I couldn't find any, because now that the Rise of Skywalker came out, um, you'd, you'd think that there would be more, but now there's people that are like, well, this means that she's not. And I was like, okay, I need, like, the one time I want to actually look for these bad theories, like, they're not there. It <laughs> makes me sad. <laughs> um... And, and then I thought, oh, wait a second, Johnny Grosso. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad theory. It's just I take that back. It's just not correct. That's the word. I mean, it could be correct. Anything could happen. But that would. I wouldn't like that because then. I like. I guess I like the idea that she comes from nowhere and she can be but she's still someone because she's the greatest even though she's not a Skywalker. Oh, I know. I'm not saying I am no, not the idea. I'm just saying because I think Pablo Hidalgo said like, well, Kyla might not be telling the truth and bad, bad, bad. Yeah, I mean, think really about sad. it. Even if she is a Skywalker, she still came from nowhere. She wasn't really raised by Luke or... Right, but then that would be the same, just the same as Luke. As Luke, yeah. I mean, we still do have the story of Finn being a nobody, but... Yeah. So, we, it's not like we completely lose that message. My personal preference is that she is not a blood Skywalker, but, like, she kills Kylo or whatever, and everyone's like, oh, guess there's no more Skywalkers, and Ray's like, you know what? No, I don't have a last name, so now my last name is Skywalker. You know? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my first preference. She takes on the name, but it's not, like, her blood. You know what I mean? Right. Right. See, like, something like that would be cool, but I, like, I want her to be from nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> um, uh, so, y you know, I was trying to look for people and their reasons for thinking that she's a Skywalker. And then I had my dad and I was like, hey, can you um, 
send a tweet to your 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 boy Johnny Grosso and um you know ask him about his theory tell him I need it for an essay don't tell him I'm trying to prove him wrong but like <laughs> <laughs> just tell him and uh, he was like okay sure and he like replied instantly <laughs> um do you want to hear it actually uh sure it's pretty long. I mean, he talked about it all throughout our podcast, but, you know, I gotta give this guy some credit. I mean, I, I will say that when Force Awakens came out, I was definitely big into that theory. Um, yeah. Just because I felt like there were certain thematic things that sort of pointed in that direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, Last Jedi came out and sort of disproved it. And I can't say I'd be like, furious if they decided to go that route in The Rise of Skywalker somehow. Yeah. Because I think even J.J. in, like, an interview or something said, like, there's more to the story about Rey's parentage. So that that could mean she's someone, but it still could mean that he was just like, let's delve into who her parents were a little bit. Um, You're like, here, look at them, so selling her for drinking money. Although it's weird because Kylo can't be completely correct. Because in The Force Awakens, we saw their ship flying away, but, like, Kylo said they died on Jakku. So there has to be some sort of in- something there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I wonder if... Because I think when J.J. says there's more to story, I don't think he necessarily means she's a Skywalker or a Solo or a Thrawn or whatever people say now. A clone. <laughs> she's Rey Onaka. <laughs> yes, the only story I'll accept. That's the only one. But uh, when JJ said that, I don't think he necessarily means that. I mean, he could. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not JJ, so I can't speak for him. But right. he could, certainly could. You know, I don't know anything. But I think he could definitely also mean, like, how much of the truth did Kylo tell? Is there more to what happened there than just them selling her? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah. So, he replied, so my dad was just like, my dad says like, oh, you know, my daughter needs to know about your Ray theory for her paper, you know, go ahead. (laughs) And, um, so he says, hi, wow, okay, okay, basically, (laughs) he just sounds so excited, it's adorable. (laughs) I feel Rey is a Skywalker because of all the many hints and clues in episodes 7 and 8 about the mystery of who her family is. That alone points to some significance. Rey constantly talks about her family. She also looks a lot like Padme and Leia. Lor San Tekka is, uh, is on Jakku with the map to Skywalker right next to Rey. It's a huge galaxy, but he's there and has a relationship with Leia. To me, she's royalty. Then the Skywalker family lightsaber calls to you, Rey, as Ma says. Kylo seems to know of a girl, of a girl, uh, he says, what girl, and it is you. These are major hints. <laughs> Ray and Leia in episode 7 share a loving embrace and they've never met that we know of. There's not a stranger, that's not a stranger's just met hug. In episode 9, Tisa, Le, uh, Leia and Ray hug in a tearful embrace and we know that footage comes from old episode 7 footage. Maybe JJ shot, shot a scene where Leia reveals Ray as hers. And decide to save that to reveal for later and just reveal Kylo as a solo, which was done kind of nonchalant through casual Snoke dialogue. Luke stresses in 8, why, why you, Ray from nowhere, why did they send you? He says this several times, this again hints at it. Ray and Kylo are connected through a force like Luke and Leia. Snoke says he did that, but he also says to use a person's weakness against them. This leads me to... Kylo telling Rey her parents are no one. He is doing what Snoke taught him. Use the person's weakness against them so he can get Rey to join him. He's lying to her. If he tells her she is a Skywalker, then she'll definitely stay good and try to stop him. Lucas also said the films are about the Skywalkers. Why change it now? Rey is a Skywalker. How is she a Skywalker? A. She she is just the daughter of Leia and Han. And Han didn't know Leia was pregnant and then hid Rey for her own protection protection because she saw Ben Solo was turning. B, now that Palpatine is back, maybe not back. We just heard a laugh, guys. 
Um, sorry. Now that Palpatine's back, maybe we go back to prequel tr- uh, trilogy logic and Rey was c- created by the midi-chlorians inside Leia, maybe even done by Palpatine. This way, Leia had another reason to hide from La- Han, which was easy because he was never around anyway. I think that's most of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I will say if Rey is a Skywalker, she should be Luke's because it's very it's extremely convoluted especially to save for the last movie of the trilogy to explain her being a secret child of Leia. Mm-hmm. Um in my personal opinion, I think. Right. I mean, I'm sure they could do it, but I think it would be very hard to pull off. And for casual audiences, I think would be like, wait, what? So. Yeah. I will say that much to Johnny Grass's theory. And also, Leia, as much as she is part of the Skywalker <coughs> heritage, she has never called herself a Skywalker. She has yeah. a lot of animosity towards Vader and Anakin. Um, mm-hmm. And I think... While Luke feels differently about Vader, Leia does not. So I would put, if Rey would be Leia's child by somehow, I wouldn't necessarily call that, call her being a Skywalker, unless she'd be part of the family. I'd say she's more like an Organa or an Organa Solo. Yeah. Um, So. That's my thoughts on that part of it. (laughs) That part. That part. (laughs) Uh, there was something else. Um, I don't know. I think, especially from the Force Awakens perspective, I definitely felt like that's where it was pointing. That doesn't, it doesn't automatically mean she's a Skywalker. It could just mean she has a connection. Like, I don't know. I think I'm Mm -hmm. very much into this idea of her taking the name but not being blood or anything. Yeah. That um, seems... Because then it's like... Because, like, Skywalker blood seems a little cursed. Not gonna lie. Yeah. They're not <laughs> having a great time. Uh, no, doesn't look like it. <laughs> but maybe it's something like the legacy of the name lives on, but it's time for the bloodline to end. Uh-huh. Just like it's time for the Jedi to end. Like your dad said so one yeah. time, we were talking about this, something like, she'll start a new, like, Jedi faction called the Skywalker. That would also be really cool. Yeah, I thought that was a great idea, and I was telling a classmate about it. He's like, oh, that sucks. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, <like it. laughs> um, I think the only problem that would be with that is just general audiences might not, like... I don't want to say they wouldn't get it, but they would be like, well, wait, why are they called Skywalkers? Did Rey have, all of a sudden have a bunch of children? You know? <laughs> like, that would, I think, be the one thing. Start cranking them. Yeah. So that, I think, <laughs> would be, like, the one thing. One problem with that, maybe. Possibly. They could definitely do it in a way that's not confusing. Uh, they got so much to do in this movie. Yeah. So much to do. And I am I have faith in J.J. Abrams being able to do it. Definitely. I just can't see how. I think, I don't know, like, obviously, my dream would be to direct a Star Wars movie, but I would never want to direct, like, a main trilogy one. I'd want to do an anthology one, because I feel like that's just less responsibility. Because, <laughs> like, even the people that didn't like Solo, which, like, I love Solo, but, like, even the people that didn't like it, they were not nearly as mad as the people who didn't like The Last Jedi. You yeah. Know? I feel like it's a lot more responsibility to be doing one of the main movies. Not that the anthology films are less important, but... They seem to get slightly less hate, question mark? Yeah. I mean, we do only have two of them. But I feel like it's less, especially if you do one with, like, more, like, original characters or just, like, side characters. Mm -hmm. There's less people that will say you ruined their childhood. You know? Yeah. Oh. So. Children, children. <laughs> I know. It's, that's always been a weird thing to me. Like, your childhood's still there. Those movies are still there. You don't have to watch the new one if you don't, again, if you don't like it. 
Like, it's fine if you didn't like it. You're allowed to have that opinion, but... It didn't, Stop ruining everyone else's view. It didn't... It doesn't ruin your memories, you know? Yeah. Apparently it does, Zoe. Because they didn't have anything else to do in their lives. I don't understand. Um, but yeah. It's a lot of responsibility to do one of the main films. Because you aren't going to please everybody. With any nope. movie, but with, some, with so much weight on your shoulders, it's even worse, I think. So. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I applaud the people who can put up with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know how Ryan Johnson stays as active on Twitter as he does, because it's ugly. So you know, maybe also he John can... Boyega. And yeah. Mar even Mark Hamill lately, ever since Last Jedi came out. Because, like, I would have thought that Mark Hamill would be one of the untouchable ones, because he's, like, the OG guy. But, like, even he gets so much hatred, and it's, like, Crazy. People just need to put that hatred to better causes. I know. Like, like you can not like a movie. You can talk about why you don't like it. You know, you can criticize things. That's okay. Just be nice. Don't harass people. It's, it's very a... easy to do. It's very, very easy to criticize something without harassment. You know? Yeah. Just be nice. And, like, opinion etiquette should be a thing on the internet more. Because, like, it's one thing if someone, like, tweets or whatever, and they're like, wow, I love this movie, and then someone comments, like, like, how much they hate it. Like, at that point, you're just kind of raining on someone's parade, and that's just rude. Like, if you were in a store, and two people were talking about how much they liked the movie, you wouldn't butt in and talk about how awful it is, because that's No, because they're just hidden behind their, their screens, like, because yeah. they want to... Now, like, if someone was like, hey, what did everybody think of this movie? And you're like, oh, I didn't like it. Like, that's fine. But, like, if someone's just like, oh, I like this, and you just want to be rude, like, just just don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I feel like we talk about this a lot in our podcast. Well, I know, but it's just, like, such a pervasive thing. It's hard it's not just, to. Yeah, it's just... Ugh... <sighs> frustrated. Just be nice. It's not hard. It's really not. Just be nice to people. Be polite. If you don't like something, don't be rude to people who do like it. Yeah. Just be respectful. <laughs> oh, well. No one will listen. No. Unfortunately. Tis the world we live in. <sighs> so, celebration recap finished and done. Rant finished. <laughs> yep, it was a great time. I wonder what they're gonna have at the next celebration. Because they're going on their movie pause until 2022 mm -hmm. is when the next movie's gonna come out besides R Rise of Skywalker. Um, so I, I can't imagine we'll be getting too much information about those movies if they're not gonna, if the next one won't come out for another two years after Celebration. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll have like Mandalorian Season 2, Resistance Season 3 hopefully, Cassian and K2 show. But, like, I wonder what else, because that's not a lot for a whole celebration. Maybe they'll yeah. be a new game. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Let's see what they have. <laughs> I think a slowdown yeah. on content, though, is good, I think. Yeah, especially for those haters. Yeah, well, and also, call like... They called fans. <laughs> I'd, like... I don't know. I never want to... There to be, like... Too much Star Wars. Not, like... Okay. Like, I don't want there to be something... Like, a point where, like, I can't even keep up at all anymore. Like, I'm definitely very behind on the comics and books. But, like, at least I can keep up with the general Star Wars stuff. 
I don't know, everyone there would be, like, so much that I just can't, like, keep track of it all anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, like, a nice little break would be good. People can recuperate from the trilogy, pay more attention to the shows while they're running. I think it'll be a good thing. I think. Yeah. (sighs) So... I don't know. I don't think I have any more words. Uh, I don't think I have any either. Um, well, it's 11 o'clock, so... Yeah, you should get to bed. Yeah. Um, so, I was Zoe. I was Lizzie. Uh, thank you for listening to Star Wars Geek Girl. May the Force be with you, and goodbye. Goodbye. Star Wars Geek Girl They're geek girls that like Star Wars And sometimes cry